Hi, it's Dan, and in this video, I want to show you a product that I've been looking forward to for a long time. This is the new sauna oil extractor, model EUJ702. Now, this is a unit that lets you make cold-pressed oil at home, and it's not a standalone unit. It's used in conjunction with a sauna horizontal juicer. If you have a 606 or a 707, it works fine with that. It just attaches right on. I'll show you in a bit. And the benefits of this, of course, making oil at home, first of all, it's cold pressed. You don't have that oil that's made in an industrial process where it's heated. You lose a lot of the nutrients. Um, you know exactly what's in it. You've put the ingredients in. Now, you're not going to produce liters and liters of oil. That's not what something like this is designed for. It's designed to produce small quantities for health purposes, for flavoring, for uh, adding to recipes, things like that. You're not going to make bottles and bottles of it. And what I want to do is take a look at it here. This, again, like I said, it uses a cold press technology. There's no heating required, and it does a lot of different seeds and nuts. Uh, I was looking in the instruction manual, and we've been testing it for a while, and there's about 19 different seeds and nuts in there, including things like coconut, uh, almonds, hemp seeds, flax. We'll show you a, a few here today. But first of all, I want to open it up and show you what's inside. So here's what's inside. First thing I want to show you is this. And the impression I get is this thing is solid. It's quite heavy in my hands here. Again, it's made from stainless steel, except for this aluminum mounting unit here, which doesn't come in contact with the oil. And I want to show you these grooves here. This is where the oil comes out. And this is something you'll see when we extract the oil that need to be cleaned periodically as you're going along. And this mounts on just like you would mount on a juicer, a juicing unit, goes right there. Let me open this for you. This is the pressure cap and this is just basically where the oil is pressed. And this thing is a regulating ring and you'll notice the one little divot there. The one divot, it's listed in the instruction manual, but this is designed generally for seeds. You'll see in just a moment, there's one with two divots that's designed for nuts. So what else is in the box? Well, here is the funnel that just mounts on top. I want to show you this. It comes with a glass oil container, oil pitcher, as well as a strainer. That just sits over here, collects the oil. I was a little curious about this. Looks like a crazy puppet. This is actually used to remove this front cap here because it can get warm. The oil itself doesn't get very hot. We'll test it during the extraction with a, a thermometer. And finally, there's this bag here which has a few other accessories. Here's that second regulating ring that I mentioned. You might notice the two divots there, the one used mainly for nuts. There's also a cleaning brush, just to scrub those grooves. And finally, there's a metal pin. And this is used at the end. Like I said, this can get a little hot, and if it gets on a little tight, you can use this to loosen it here. There's also an instruction manual. I've pulled it aside already. That'll show you all about what, what nuts and seeds you can process here. So that's all the parts, and what I want to do now is actually try the machine out. I've got a wide variety of seeds and nuts I want to try today, so let's do that. So here's what I'm going to be processing today, plus coconut, that's off to the side, we'll do that later. And the real key to focus on here is get the freshest, highest quality nuts and seeds that you can. The fresher they are, just like when you juice, you know, if you get fresh oranges, fresh apples, you'll get a much higher quality juice. Same thing with the oil. The fresher they are, the higher the oil content in the seeds and nuts. So that's really important. And it's especially important with this guy, flaxseed. You want to make sure you, if there's a date on it, check to make sure it's the freshest you can. Maybe get it from a bio shop. So that's really critical. So what am I doing here? Flax. I also have poppy seeds, sesame seed, sunflower seeds. Over here are some nuts plus pumpkin seeds, walnuts, pumpkin seeds, almonds. And here's kind of the dividing line. Anything bigger than a sunflower seed, you really need to chop up and process. You can use one of those hand nut grinders. 
I actually went through this morning with a knife and it took probably half hour. So if you can find them pre-chopped, that's the way to go. I want to show you what's inside the oil extractor. Because we saw some of the bits before, but not everything. I want you to see the auger because it's pretty, pretty cool. So here again is the main housing assembly. This is what I showed before with the grooves. This is where everything happens. The auger is crushing the seeds and the nuts inside here. The oil is coming out. This auger, like I said, it's stainless steel. It's really heavy duty, really solid. So it disassembles very easily. This just pops off and it assembles easy. So let me put it together and start processing some oil. I start just by putting the aluminum mounting unit in. Then the main housing. Make sure these circular cutouts line up. I put the auger in. Make sure it fits in all the way. Put the regulating ring into the front cap. And screw that on. Then just the feeding tube. There's a little circle on the front and there's an arrow here. That's where they line up and it needs to drop in. Finally the funnel and it's ready to go. I'm going to start with sunflower seeds and just line this up here. I'm not going to use this strainer. That, that's, that's up to you. Sometimes it'll filter out a bit of husk and things. Sunflower seeds should go pretty well. Just turn on the unit and start putting them in. One thing to keep in mind is it's good to periodically brush these grooves and you just kind of go back and forth and that'll, you can see it kind of speeds it up. It's something you want to monitor as you're going along and it's just if you get bits of husk in there, they can clog it a little bit. I've got a thermometer here too. I want to check the temperature. Check it in the oil and then as it comes out as well. So it looks like it's topped off at about just under 32, 31.7, 31.8. And I also want to see if I can get a reading up here. Right at the unit. It's going to be warmer up here, of course. So here, I've got a reading. It's not much warmer right as it comes out, 33.1. So again, well below that threshold of, what is it, 42 degrees. Another kind of cool thing, these husks, they're actually kind of tasty. It's a bit like popcorn. So as you can see, it's going pretty well. It's taking about five minutes maybe to go through that. Producing a nice yield. I've just got a few more seeds here, let it run through. So that's all done. You see you got a good yield here. And like I said before, you make just as much as you need for that day or for that day or the, and the next day. And sunflower oil, it's, it's got a lot of good properties, especially known for its high vitamin E content. Next up, I'm going to do flax seeds. It's a really popular oil. One thing that's um, noted in the instruction manual is that flax seeds can squeak. It's the consistency of their hulls that they get in there kind of slippery. Again, it comes down to the quality of your ingredients. Higher quality or just the freshest seeds you can find should minimize that. We tested it, noticed some squeaking before, not so much with the newer ones, and it tends to go away as you uh, extract more oil. That one smells so good.
Well, in this case, there is no squeaking. Probably the quality of these seeds we're using. And it's also coming out quite quickly. I want to try these. I really like trying these husks. Mm -hmm. It's really tasty. So they've all gone through there. I'm really pleased with the results. No squeaking, it's uh, extracting things just fine. Flaxseed oil has a lot of benefits. I think the most popular is it's really high in omega-3s. So that's the sesame seed oil, and that ends our test with seeds. Sesame seed oil has a lot of good properties, especially its omega-6, omega-9 content. Now before I start with the nuts and the pumpkin seeds, it's a good time to clean out the unit. I need to change the regulating ring anyway. Remember, there's two of those regulating rings and I need to put in number two, which is for these bigger pieces. So let me show you how I disassemble it. Again, here's this metal rod. Because this can get hot, it's not so hot right now, but I'll put this in. And sometimes the husks can build up and kind of seal it on there. In this case, it didn't really. But this gives you a good start. It gives you a little bit of momentum. And then if it's too hot, you can unscrew it with this. Next, I'll take the funnel off and the feeding tube. This unit's a bit warm, but not hot at all. You can see there's a few nuts built up inside there, or seeds. And again, remember, this unit, the aluminum housing, don't get it wet, don't wash it. This I can just wipe down with a paper towel. I'll just leave it in here for the next items. So these are ready to be cleaned. It'll take a bit longer than with a juicer just because, you know, it's oil. Oil takes a little longer to get off of things. I could also fill the sink with some warm water, with some soap, but just for time's sake I'm going to wipe everything down here. One thing I want you to notice is you can kind of see the build up here. This is just some of the husks that built up. This is the main thing you want to get cleaned. You can also use the brush just like that, kind of go around, dislodge any stubborn seeds, 
poppy seeds that might be stuck in there. And it's a good chance to give those grooves a good cleaning as well. And really that's about it. So I'm moving on now to the bigger things, the nuts and the pumpkin seeds. I'm also changing out this ring number one for the ring number two. Again, that's designed for the bigger products. I'm curious to see how this goes. I'll start out with the walnuts. And we'll see if I chop them into small enough pieces. Looks like that's about all the walnut oil I'll get. Had I chopped more this morning, of course, I could have got more. So there's walnut oil. It's high in fatty acids and also actually rich in antioxidants. So again, this went kind of slowly too, but it did produce a nice, rich, dark green pumpkin oil. And I don't know if you knew it, pumpkin oil is actually one of the few sources in nature of zinc that's readily available for your body. So what I found with the almonds, uh, they were going slowly at first. I don't think I chopped them small enough, so I scooped them out, re-chopped them, and then it seemed to go fine. Almond oil has a lot of vitamin E, and it's actually good applied directly to the skin. It's really healthy for it. So now I want to try something completely different, and that's coconut. In the instruction manual, it says it can do it, but you've got to go very carefully, a pinch at a time. And you want to use these dehydrated coconut shreds, not the little pieces, and definitely not the ones you buy in the U.S. that are moistened and full of sugar. It's actually going a lot better than I expected. And I am putting a bit more than a pinch at a time, but I'm still trying to be careful about it. If you put too much in, it could uh, heat up, kind of melt in there and maybe block the unit. Also remember to keep this grooves, keep these grooves cleaned out with the brush from time to time. So I'm really pleased with how that, how that went. Uh, interesting story, yesterday we were trying it and having some trouble with the coconut, really having to feed it slow, 
I bought a bag from a different shop and this one went great. No problems at all, no clogging, and it flowed just as well as those seeds. And coconut oil, uh, again, great for cosmetics. You can rub, your, rub it in your hair, put it on your skin. It has a lot of uses and it tastes great too, of course. So one last thing I'd like to do before I wrap up this video. There's one more function. It wasn't even listed on the uh, ingredients list, at least in the instruction, early instruction manual I had, and that's oats. Well, you're not going to oil oats, but you can make oatmeal, like oat flakes from this. I'm anxious to try it. I'm using number two regulating ring, and you can use this to make cereal, add some fruit to it, some milk. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, oatmeal flakes. Well, this is pumping out oatmeal faster than I can play with it or eat it, which is what I want to try. You can see that would make a nice um, start of a breakfast cereal. Add some fruit, some brown sugar, some milk, yogurt. Anyway, that should do it. Uh, we've done a lot of things here today. I was impressed. Yeah, it took a little longer with the walnuts um, and the almonds, but once I chopped them into smaller bits, things went fine. And really with the seeds and the coconut, I was super impressed. If you want more information about the sauna oil extractor, come to our website. That's at saunaproducts.eu. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan. See you next time.